Okay, so uh, if you open the lab that I just shared with you, uh, it is called rsync. So basically, rsync, I think, in my opinion, um, it should be available there already uh, within the Kali Linux. If not, you can try to install it using apt. All right. So, so for me, I I checked. It's I I didn't need to install it. So I hope that it's available with you. If not, you can just run apt get install. Uh, let me just try. R. Sync. So. So you can see here that it says that it's already um, it's already the the newest version that I have. So you can go ahead and try to install it, right? So now once you have the uh, R sync, my recommendation is that because we are trying to do the backup, so in that case, um, I recommend that you go and move to your home directory and just check if there is anything. That that is already there. So we have Kali. I can go to Kali. I'm just checking where should I start the backup. Okay, let's just go back to home, and I'm going to create here two directories. Okay, although the instructions in the lab are a bit different in a way that it says create your daily backup and weekly backup. Before I do that, I want to show you basically how to actually backup. Okay by using rsync and then you can create the folders which are mentioned in the lab that you have to create a daily folder and then a weekly folder okay so by using mkdir for example i'm going to create directory one here okay or i'm just going to call it uh, folder one okay i am going to make another folder in the same Location well, usually taking the backup, it's not recommended that you create it in the same folder. Okay, so I'm doing it just for the sake of you know simplicity and to make you guys so that you, I don't have to switch to different directories all the time. So I'm going to create another folder called folder two with mkdir. Now, if I write ls, you can see that I have folder number one created and folder number two created here, right now. What I'm going to do is that I'm going to call this as the source folder, which means that whatever contents are there in this folder has to be backed up in folder number two using rsync. Okay. In fact, it was better if I can just. Okay. By the way, if you want to remove a folder or a directory, remember that you have to use r m minus r recursive for the folders or the directories. Because, um, if you just miss R, it's going to give you an error. Usually for deleting a file, you don't need to use recursive R, okay? So, okay, what I have done is that I have just created one folder, folder one, and the new folder that I'm just going to create now, I'm going to call it backup folder, okay? to make it even more clear, for example. So in this case, now I have folder number one, which is the source folder, and I want to take this, uh, the backup of this folder by using rsync. Another thing that I'm going to do is, because this folder is empty right now, there's nothing in it. So if you wanna see, you can go to folder one and see that it's an empty folder, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a text file uh, notepad.txt, just creating a file for the folder. So now you can see that uh, I have two folders. One of them has the file, which is this one, which is notepad.txt. The backup folder is empty, right? So I can just show you the backup folder. And you can see that it's empty. Now I want to take the backup of folder number one uh sorry because i'm inside that so now you can see that i want to take the backup of folder number one uh into this uh, second folder and i'm going to use rsync for it now for rsync 
if you want help, you can write help here and see what are the options that you have. So it has plenty of options. We are not going to use all of them, of course. Uh, we are just going to understand the basic usage of R sync and how we can um, take the backups, right? So the option that we are going to use is minus A to archive. You can also use minus R for recursive if it's a directory or folder within the folders are there. So you want to take the backup of all of them. So you have to use minus R in that case. V is for verbose, which basically means when it is basically taking the backup, it is going to show you. Uh, you know, it's always nice to see verbose mode of, uh, of any package that you are using. Okay, so, and then there is an hyphen hyphen delete that we will use today, uh, which basically means that if, for instance, um, there are some, uh, there are some files in the folder number one, which were there and then later I deleted them. So in order to sync the two folders exactly the same so that the destination folder now has an extra file. Let's just say that I copied notepad notepad.txt into the backup folder. And then later on, I deleted it from my source folder, which was uh, the first folder. Now the backup has that extra notepad.txt and I don't want it because I want to sync them both the same. So I have to use hyphen hyphen delete to make sure that the extra files which are in the backup folder, they get deleted. Hope that, I hope that makes sense, right? Okay, so without any further delay, I'm just going to, to show you how to back up, okay? So I'm going to use rsync. rsync, sorry. And don't get confused when you see all this stuff. When I when I press the tab key, remember, this is just it is showing me that when I press the tab key, it starts giving me a more information. So if I don't press the tab key, it doesn't show me R sync. Sorry. The reason I use the tab key is I want the command to complete without any error. Okay, minus AV, I'm going to use the archive option in the verbose mode and the source folder that I want to keep. So remember, I'm already in the home directory. So I want to, um, I want to take the backup of folder number one to the backup folder. If you are not in the directory where these folders are, you have to give the whole path, slash root, slash home, slash folder, and then space the destination folder. So you cannot see uh, like slash root slash home and all that because I'm already in the inside the home directory. So I don't need to give the whole path here. Okay, guys. Okay, it's clear. Well, let's just go ahead and press enter. And let's just see what happens. So well, because I put verbose V, it basically showed me that it's sending an incremental file list, created the directory backup. So copying that file and sending. Now let's see, initially the backup folder was empty. The file was only in the, um, in this folder. So now I will just move to the backup folder. Oops. Ah, so by mistake, I, I did not completely write the path here. Let me just do it again because it has created a new backup folder. Okay, so. Sorry. So I have now another backup folder. So I'm going to just remove the backup. I don't want to confuse you guys. So, so I'll try to do it again. Uh, this time I have to give the whole path because I did not give the complete path, uh, sorry, complete file name or folder name. So now it will work. Okay, so I am going to sync uh, the folder one with the 
backup folder. Now let's move on to the backup folder and see if it has taken the backup of folder number one. Yes, it has. I'm going to go to the folder one backup and then you can see that the file has been copied or moved here. It is clear, guys. Yes. Uh, yes. Now, let's just see what happens if I go back to the home. Okay. Now, let's just see that I create a new file in folder number one, and let's see if it gets automatically backed up or no. Okay. So let me just create a new file. So I, right now I'm in the home directory, okay? So I don't need to go every time inside this folder to create a file. I can just give the path like I was telling you. Touch, so I'm going to call it node uh, file2.txt. Okay, and then I will give the whole path now. I have to give the path. So folder one, sorry, slash root. Come on, why is not good? I'm already in the home. So touch folder one, and I'm going to create file two dot txt. What I'm just doing by using touch command is that I'm creating a new file inside folder number one. I don't have to go inside the folder to create it. That's the whole point. Now let's just see the contents of folder number one. Okay, now we have an extra file, which is file number two.txt. Before we had notepad.txt. Let's now see the backup folder contents. Okay, CD folder and now you can see here that it still has only one file which is notepad.txt now you might be wondering that why it did not take the backup of the second file am i right it should have yes, taken the backup right. right yes yeah yes so the quest the the answer to this question is that because I ran the command once only, it did not take the, it is not going to take the backup automatically. It's so, like overwrite? No, 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 no. You're not getting my mm. point. Let me see, show you. So I had only one file in, in this folder before, and then I ran the rsync command to take the backup here. This time I created a new file inside this folder. And we were expecting that it will automatically back it up. I mean, that's the whole idea of the backup, right? That it should yeah. automatically take the backup. But remember, I'm just using a rsync command to take the backup. What it means is that if I want to take the backup again, I have to run the command again to take the backup. Oh, okay. now, this is not a very good idea in terms of taking the backup. Yeah, it's not practical. And do it every time. So the solution to this is that, okay, what we can do is that we can um, sort of create an automatic uh, kind of backup by using uh, a con cron tab, which I am going to show you shortly. So in the cron tab, if you give the job that, okay, do this um, at this particular time, it will be done automatically. So in other words, I need to go ahead and use cron tab, okay? Inside the cron tab, uh, I'm going to mention when the backup should be taken. Okay, now before I start doing that, you have to understand the format in which you are going to write, right? So, mm -hmm. for example, just imagine that I want to take the backup of uh, folder number one into the backup folder every day. Okay. okay. To call it every day, a daily backup. And I want to take it at 5 p.m., for example. So, every day at 5 p.m., whatever I mention here in the uh, cron tab is going to run at 5 p.m. and the backup will be taken automatically. 
right? Mr. Asad, what's a cron tab? Yeah, so so in the cron tab, basically, whatever you mention, the script or whatever command you mention, it is going to run that according to the date and time. So let me just complete the command and then we will come back to it that, okay, uh, how is it working? So if you look at the format here, here, this is the minutes, okay, at what minutes it should execute. So for example, um, I want to just say that, okay, at 5.30, I want to take the, uh, sorry, I want to take the uh, daily backup. So 7.30 is the minutes, 17 is 5 p.m., okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, DOM is um, date of the month, uh, then MON is month, and then DOW is day of the week, which basically means that you can take the weekly backup, you can take the daily backup, you can take the monthly backup by using these three fields. Now, remember for the daily backup, you will just simply put star, star, and star, okay? which basically means mm -hmm. that I'm just taking a daily backup at 5.30 p.m. Okay. okay, if I want to take okay. it on Friday only, a weekly backup, I'm just giving an example. I have to replace the last star, which is day of the week. So there are seven days in the week, okay? Yes, okay. you'll write seven. It starts with Monday. So Monday, Tuesday, oh. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Let's say I want to take backup on the Friday. I have to write five here. Now, why did I write five here? So if you count it on your fingers, so Monday is, is a day number one. Uh, it's the fifth day. Yeah. yeah. So you can use these numbers from one to five to specify the day on which you want to take the backup. So this will be your weekly backup. Now, let me go ahead and uh, just take the daily backup of, okay, so what- What I, does the DOM mean? Uh, date of the month. A specific date. Date of oh, the month, yeah. Can you repeat it again? Because DOM, it's just like uh, the days too. Let, let me give an example one by one, and then I think it will be more clear, okay? So let me just give the example first for the daily backup, okay? So for the daily backup, I'm going to put that, okay, at 5.30 p.m., I want to take the backup. Which backup are? So what do I want to execute at this time is the command that you have. So the syntax is written here, by the way. Okay, so mm -hmm. the command you have to write is the one that I was writing in the terminal, that is? Yeah, the rsync. Yes, R S Y N C. So rsync minus AV, right? archive, yes, exactly. Now the source folder, which folder I was trying to back up, I will just say slash, um, slash home. Let me just check one thing. So CD slash home. I'm just trying to make sure that no mistake. Okay, CD slash home. Okay. Okay, so CD slash home, and then inside the home, what was the folder name? Uh, folder backup file. Folder. 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 Okay. Yeah. So I want to take the backup of folder number one and where am I trying to take the backup? It is again in home. Which backup is, folder. Yeah, it is not recommended to have both of them in the same folder. Otherwise, if you lose the other, I mean, that uh, yes. home directory, you will lose both backup. And so it's usually recommended to have a different folder or even better on a different disk, okay? In the real time scenario I'm talking about. Okay, so back up, I just want to check. Folder one, I guess it was. No, no. So it's backup folder. Yeah, folder. Yeah, so backup folder. Okay, so this will do the job for me for the, you know, the daily backup. Any questions so far? So yes, Mr. Yeah. Uh, you said about the stars, the last one, if I want to make it like a weekly uh, backup, uh, what about the first two stars? Yeah. What does represent? Okay, so let's just say um, every week on Friday at 8 p.m., I want to take the uh, weekly backup. 
before I actually do that, remember something that um, if I just write the same command, I'm just I'm just trying to explain you basically the difference between weekly and daily. So let's just say I write here that okay, at 8 p.m. So 12 plus 8 is 20. At 8 p.m., I want to take the weekly backup. So Friday. So Friday is day number five. Yes. R S Y N C sync minus A V slash home slash. Okay. Now let's stop here. Think logically. Mm -hmm. If I'm taking a daily backup and for five days, I've taken the daily backup in a folder called backup folder. Okay. Shouldn't I take the weekly backup of that daily folder? Oh, no. no, because it's already. Yeah, you have to understand the backup. Uh, actually, I don't know if you have studied this uh, father, grandfather, and son kind of backup. I don't know. But I'm just trying. I can actually write the same thing. I, I will write, for example, like just like that. Okay, slash home slash backup folder. I what believe it's. Better to separate it in different yeah. folders. Yeah. So what I'm trying to say here is remember, okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to the home again. Okay. So I, actually this command will work the one I wrote. It's just that it doesn't make sense like this. So I'm going to make another folder here and I'm going to call it weekly. Okay. Okay. What is basically mean is that in this weekly folder, I'm going to take the backup of my daily folder okay this is how it works actually okay and then you empty the daily folder are you getting my point you want to save the space right yeah so yes we're folder, gonna have... each five days we're gonna empty the five days because exactly. we don't wanna you know like have yeah. five days five days five days so yeah. each week we're gonna have one folder for the five days exactly and, you yeah. got it right uh, but we don't lose our okay, we are not going into that de detail of doing it, but I'm trying to explain you the, the logic. That daily backup, you're taking it for, for the, let's say, every single day for five days. Now, it's time to take the weekly backup of all that what is now inside that folder, daily folder, and then take a weekly backup of everything that you have and then empty that folder. So you're basically saving the space there emptying the daily folder, copying it to the weekly, and then go on and start the daily again from zero, one, two, three, four, five, right? Again, take the weekly backup. And by the way, there's another next step. Once you take the weekly backup, by the end of the month, you take the monthly backup and then empty the weekly folder. Are you, does it make sense? Yes, to you? yes, 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 yeah, we go, yeah. Yes, okay, that makes sense. So now, for instance, I'm just going to write here that, okay, uh, I want to take the weekly backup of my backup folder. Okay, and then where do I want to save it? Let's try to now decipher it. What is happening here? Every day at 5.30 p.m., the backup of this folder is going into this folder. It was better if I had named it daily, so it would make more sense, but it's okay. Now, on every Friday at 8 p.m., the backup of this daily folder is going into the weekly folder. Now, what should be the next step, guys? Uh, to remove what is in the daily folder. No, no, I mean, forget about oh, the so monthly for, for now. We, I'm, I'm talking about right now about the- uh... We'll try the monthly backup. Okay. Can anyone tell me how it should look like? Specify the minutes and specify the hour. Okay, and... let's let's let, let me write it. So we specify the time, for example. Okay, let's just call it at um, uh, again. Let's just call it five p.m. Okay. Okay. Now, so what is next? It's because star everyone... five star, right? Sorry. No, it's, no. You you should specify the day of the month. Okay, tell me. Yeah, and the other is a star. 
Okay, so, so this will give you all my affiliate link. 30? Back. We call it, let's just say that. No, I write it one, for example, because, yeah, or it's 99. Should I, what should I write? Uh, you, you should write uh, that the day of the month that all the month have it. Okay, exactly. So which date? Let's just say. Let's 20? say, for example, one, two, three, something like that. Ah, okay, so we take one. Yeah, and then okay. star. 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 Do you think, yeah, and uh, complete everything. R S Y N C minus A V slash home slash weekly. 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 Go to the monthly folder. Yeah. Oh, I haven't created the monthly, but I'm just going to create one. So we call it, oh, sorry, it's monthly. You got the idea anyways, right? Yeah. yeah. Right. Now, it's clear. now what, have, what is happening here is that now I have automated it using the cron tab. So basically this job, this uh, that I have given it to the cron tab is going to be executed according to this date, time and day, whatever is there. And it will automatically run this and take the backup, run this. So, so you don't need to manually go ahead and type every time that, okay, take the backup of this, take the backup of this. Mm -hmm. We have just automated. So you're just simply going to uh, exit and then just press yes and save it. Is this clear, guys? Okay, yeah, what, what nice. if we specify the month of the year? Should we specify also the, the date of the month? Um, so if you want to specify the month of the year, again, you know that you know we have 12 months, so you can specify which particular month you want to take. But in that case, it will only take the backup on that month. So it becomes a yearly kind of a backup. Yeah, I know, but I mean, it will take... The number one to 12. No, no I mean, I mean, it will take a, 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 a yearly wake up. Yes, I know exactly. It. So we have daily backup, we have weekly, we have monthly, and we have yearly. If you guys had studied, I don't know if it is covered in the lecture, it's called GFS. Just for your own knowledge, it's very interesting how the, the, the backup, uh, uh, the GFS technology or the GFS architecture works, which basically is a grandfather, father, and son backup solution, basically. So it is actually based on the same idea that you take the daily backup and then you take the weekly backup and then you take the monthly backup. And then by the end of the year, for example, you go back again and empty all the disk and then continue. And depending upon how long you want to keep this data. Okay, guys, um, I think I've spent more time on this R thing. Um, so you wanna go ahead for with the optional lab also or you want to start working on the rsync first and then uh, talk about the raid. It's up to you guys. Yeah, go ahead, Prozac. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, but... that's, that's, uh, yeah. Let's, let's go ahead with the optional lab now. So what yeah. I need to do is, the first thing I need to do is I need to shut down my Kali. So I'm just going to power it off. Okay, I think my screen is no longer being shared. So let me open the VM again. All right. Okay. You can see it now? Yes. Okay. yes. So this is my Kali Linux. Okay. Now, Remember, the when we say RAID, it basically stands for Redundant Array of Inexpensive Disks, which means we are talking about the disks now. We are not talking about the folders. So you are trying to take the backup of the disk. So if I talk about RAID in the real world, we are talking about the physical hard drives. So one hard drive, you are taking the backup of that hard drive into another hard drive. Okay. Okay. Now, Kali Linux by default has only one hard drive. So if I go to edit virtual machine settings, 
you can see here that I have a hard disk of 80 GB. So if you want to try and configure RAID in a Linux machine, a virtual machine, you need to have more hard disks because it requires more than one hard disk. So for example, you guys have studied RAID 0, right? Today. Did you go through RAID 0? Yes, we did. Okay. What is RAID 0? It's to have more performance. Yeah. So it's basically, you know, these are all uh, backup solutions, RAID 0, 1, 2, but they have different, let's just say. Um, yeah. So the 0 one is going to have half 50, 50 of the data in one, and the other one is going to have the rest exactly. of the data. If exactly. you lose one of them, you're going to lose uh, half of your data. Yes. And then similarly, no, no, RAID 1, uh, sorry, RAID 0 is, is called striping. Striping means it's like you said, it's more for the performance. So half of the data will go to one disk. If you're talking about RAID 0, you, you said correctly. I thought you're talking about RAID 1. So yeah, RAID 0, half of the data goes to disk number 1, half of the data goes to disk number 2. So if you lose one disk, half of your data is gone, right? So RAID 1, uh, sorry, RAID 0 is more for the performance. Now, if you don't want to lose the data, you need to configure RAID 1. Now, RAID 1, again, you have two disks minimum. So the copy of the data is going to be replicated in two disks. So if you are writing on disk number one, the copy of that data will go to disk number two automatically. So yeah, again, so yeah. This, this is, is mirroring now here. Yes, this is mirroring. And in this case now, what is happening is that uh, if you lose one disk, you still have the second disk. The whole data is intact. The problem here is uh, it is um, in terms of, let's say, performance, uh, not as good as RAID 0 because that was uh, like dividing the data and writing on two disks so much faster. But here the performance will be a little bit degraded. But the good thing is that you have the... Uh, you have the backup of both. Now, RAID 1, 0, we, you can also call it RAID 10. I don't know if you studied it. RAID 10 or RAID 1, 0 will provide you with the option of uh, both striping and um, the, the backup. Or in other words, the, the striping will also be done. So when we say 1, 0, it actually provides you both the capabilities of RAID 0 and RAID 1. I hope that's clear, right? Okay, without going into the theory more, let's just see, for example, what, what, what do we need to do? The first step, it's actually in the lab. I think I shared the file with you already. So you go to the add and you wanna add more hard disks. So I'm going to add by default this SCSI, create it. I'm not changing anything, just I want to reduce the size of the disk. So I'm just going to call it 5 GB. Next and finish. So I have created the one virtual hard disk, which is 5 GB. I'm going to create a second one. So basically you have to create five because we want to configure RAID uh, zero and then RAID one zero. So you need uh, more than two. If I just need to configure RAID zero, I can just config, uh, you know, create two virtual hard disks and that will do the job. Okay. So two, I'm just creating more to be on the safe side. We, oh, sorry. Three, four. So one, two, three, four. One more. So I've created five virtual disks, or you can consider them as the actual disks for now. Click OK and play the virtual machine. <coughs>
All right, uh, root and then tour. Okay. Now, I've created five uh, virtual disks as you can see them. Um, you actually need a tool called, uh, I think it's called MDADM, right? Yeah. So the first thing you need to do is you need to install uh, the tool called MDADM, okay? I don't think it is available in Kali, so you need to go ahead and install it. Now, for me, I have installed it, so it's basically already the latest version, which is 4.2.4. Okay, and the second thing is that I wanna see the disks that I have created. So F disks, F disk minus L will actually show you all the disks that you have on your Kali Linux. And we need it because we need to know uh, each disk, you know, the, the path of the disk. And by the way, they are not mounted still, uh, so they are still not usable. Uh, they are just there, but not usable. You cannot use them. So you can see here that I have disk SDB, the size is 5 GB. So I know that I created this one. Slash dev slash SDC, another 5 GB. D, another 5 GB. F, another 5 GB. AT, this is the SDA. So this is the primary disk. So don't try to do anything with your primary disk, okay? In your configuring grade, okay. And then it also says here that it's basically the bootloader or the boot, you know, file is here in SDA1 because this is the primary drive. And then we have SDE. So B, C, D, E, and F. So we have five virtual disks and the science is given here. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Asad, can you show us the command again? It's for the F disk minus yeah, L. Oh, L is you. the list. Yeah. So slash dev S D B C D E F are my disks, right? Okay. Now let's go ahead and try to create RAID 0. Now it's very simple. I'm going to share a text file with you um, for all the commands that I have. Okay, so you don't have to go to the URLs and try to find it. Um, now let's try to understand this. So I'm using the tool that I just installed, MDADM, to create in the word boss mode, means show me when it's happening. I'm going to call it MD0, okay? The first, uh, you know, the RAID that I'm trying to create. So the level is RAID0. So if I'm gonna create RAID1, I just have to modify it to RAID1. But right now I'm just trying to create RAID0. How many devices am I using? Disks, I'm using two disks. Which disks I want to use? Well, you, like I said, you need to know which disks you have. So I have B, C, D, E, and F. So I can use B and C, I can use D and E, I can use E and F, I can use B and F, whatever you want to do in this example. So I'm starting with the first two disks that we have created, that is SDB and slash dev SDC. Okay. Okay, so it said that it has started the, um, you know, it has created the RAID. Uh, now, how do I know that my RAID is active now? Okay, so I have to use cat slash proc um, slash md stat, I think. Yeah. Okay. So as you can see, when I write cat slash prop slash MD stat, it basically shows me that there is MD zero. I could have given it any name that I want, okay? But I gave it MD zero to call it RAID zero, just for my own understanding, okay? So the RAID zero is now active and configured. Okay, guys? Now, it is active and configured, but I need to create a file system for this. Right now, there's no file system. 
So for example, in Linux, we have the ext3, we have the ext4. So you need to basically um, create a file system for this read that you have just configured, okay? Does it make sense, guys? Hello? Yes, yeah, yeah. It's just like uh, you have a blank disk which doesn't have any file format, so what good is that? It's not usable, right? Yeah. yeah so, right. so we need to create a file system for that. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm going to use MKFS with hyphen T, the type is ext4. So this is the one that is being used in the Linux slash dev slash MD zero. So this is my RAID that I configured on, I'm going to give it a file system. The file system is ext4. Okay, and creating the file system with this, 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 writing, so my file system has been created at all now. Now the question is that if I wanna look into this MD0, like what, if I want to, so it's like uh, in Linux, when you attach a USB, for example, to your system, you have to mount it, to see the files inside it, okay? So the next step is that I want to mount it. So where do I want to mount it? I'm just going to create a directory called mount here in the in the uh, root folder. And now I will mount that MD1 to the mount folder so that I can actually um, I can actually see the contents of this file, okay? So amount slash dev slash md0 to slash root mount. Okay, so I have mounted it now. Um, and then I can now go to cd mount. So you can see that it says lost plus found. So I basically now I have, so steps goes like this. I created the virtual hard disk five. I'm using two of them to create rail video, which basically means striping. It's not essentially taking the backup. Then I have to give a file system to that RAID MD0. After giving the file system, I have to mount it to a certain folder or a directory where I can see the contents of, of that file. So if I just create touch abc.txt, so it's basically uh, what I mean to say is that now whatever contents are being uh, written, they're actually being split across these two drives. Okay, guys, this is basically RAID 0. I'm going to share this text file. Let me just first uh, save. And then I'm just going to call it um, rate. Okay. Well, I can also teach you how to unmount and how to remove rate, but the easiest way that you can do is go ahead and delete those. Uh, but I have put that in the notepad file, how you can unmount and, and delete it, okay? So okay. let me okay. just, just, just go back to Discord and then share it. Okay, this text file that I'm sharing, it basically contains all the commands of how to create the RAID and delete the RAID and unmount and mount everything is there step by step. So you don't need to go to the reference that are there in the the word file, but for your own more explanation, if you want to go there, you know, it's always better. Okay, guys. So if you want to configure another RAID, you, the only thing you need to do is that you need to give it a different name. Uh, you're going to call it MD, MD5, for instance, and then you're going to just call it RAID5. And then you need to give two new disks. So you cannot use B and C, you can use D and E or E and F, whatever. And also one thing, keep in mind, the, the type of RAID that you are configuring, you need to, to have the minimum number of disks for that RAID. Like for example, RAID zero requires minimum two disks. RAID one requires minimum two disks. 
um, RAID 5. Uh, how many disks are there? Minimum four. RAID 5? Four. four. Yeah. So don't try to configure a RAID for which you don't have enough disks. Okay. And this is for the demonstration purposes. So I have created these five virtual disks just to show you that. Okay. I think I have taken enough of your time for the demo. Uh, now I would like you to work, first of all, with the rsync and submit it on the platform and then jump on jump onto the optional uh, lab for today. Okay, guys, I'm going to stop the okay. report and stop the share as well. I'm going to create the the breakout rooms.